Every year, Washington, D.C. hosts a National Cherry Blossom Festival, commemorating a gift from the mayor of Tokyo to the city of D.C. to celebrate the friendship between the people of the U.S. and Japan. The festival spans four weeks with over 1.5 million people coming to appreciate the beauty. Here's what we did while we were there. Since it was raining for a few days of our trip, we decided to spend most of our time indoors. On our way to a few museums, we stopped at the Woodrow Wilson Plaza. The 36,000 square foot cobblestone courtyard holds a lot of contemporary works of art and an outdoor space to hold events. Along the way, you will reach the National Mall. There are no fees to enter the mall as well as the memorial parks. Near the Capitol, many areas can be used to hold peaceful protests and large gathering areas. The National Museum of the American Indian holds the widest collection of native objects, photos, and media from the Arctic Circle to Tierra del Fuego. The museum opened in 2004 and can be traced back to the 1989 Act of Congress that established this museum to the Smithsonian. The exhibits and architecture are designed in collaboration with tribes and communities to allow visitors from around the world to get a better sense and spirit of Native America. Although the National Gallery is not part of the Smithsonian, it is also part of the museums that are free for entry. Its attached sculpture garden is the most recent addition to the gallery and located between the gallery's West Building and the Museum of National History. Ranked as the fifth most visited art museum in the world, the Gallery of Art has a large collection of paintings, drawings, and sculptures of Western art from the Middle Ages to the present, which also includes the only painting by Leonardo da Vinci in the Americas. It is recommended to visit this museum multiple times of about two hours each if you have not visited the gallery before. It can take up to eight hours or more to view every single piece of art in this museum. Penn Quarter, located nearby, contains the famous Ford's Theater, the site of Abraham Lincoln's assassination on April 14, 1865. The fatally wounded president was then carried across the street to the Peterson House, where he died the next morning. The Washington Monument is a commemoration of George Washington's leadership and set the standard for each president that precedes him. This monument towers above Washington, D.C. that serves as a reminder of his greatness. Like the man, the monument stands in no one's shadow. Along the tidal basin, we reach Martin Luther King's memorial. Dedicated in 2011, it is the newest addition to the National Mall. Standing 30 feet high and located in the southwest corner of the basin, the memorial is surrounded by cherry trees that bloom every year to adorn the anniversary of Dr. King's death. Franklin D. Roosevelt Memorial is divided into four outdoor rooms. As visitors are wandering through, you can see 21 FDR quotes and statues and murals that represent issues from the Great Depression to World War II that are purposely designed to be completely wheelchair accessible. As you walk around the basin, you are able to admire each memorial surrounded by cherry blossoms as well as walk closer to the Jefferson Memorial. Paddle boat rentals are available to the public to paddle in the waters outside of the Thomas Jefferson Memorial and still continue to view the seasonal blooming. The Tidal Basin Welcome Area and the ANA Stage host live performances through rain or shine that have dynamic cross-cultural mixes of American, Japanese, and other performing arts. Other vendors contain food and merchandise tables to purchase to celebrate the festival. We make a quick stop to the White House. This is the official residence that has been the workplace of every president of the United States since John Adams in 1800. The modern-day White House includes the executive residence, the west and east wings, 
the Eisenhower Executive Office Building and the guest residence that is the Blair House. Our trip ends at the Lincoln Memorial. The memorial is surrounded by 36 Doric columns for each state at the time of his death. The interior walls are inscribed with the full text of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address and the second inaugural address. 18 steps from the top landing of the memorial, an inscription marks the spot where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood to give his I Have a Dream speech, placed in 1963 to mark the 40th anniversary of that speech. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notification button to get notified every single time I post a new video.